Okay, honors geometry. Here begins your your extended branch of probability. So it starts with an extension of uh, day four, and then you have a day five and day six of your own. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about what's called the general multiplication rule. In uh, in the video for geometry for day four, we talked about the uh, multiplication rule for independent events. Okay. Well, here is the general multiplication rule. So notice the only difference here is this part, right? If the events are independent, remember that the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B. That's for independent events. So that's why in the uh, previous set of notes, we had this formula, the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B, right? That's for independent. But because we don't know if our events are going to be independent or not, we're going to use this formula, which means that you uh, you work with the probability of A, and then you multiply it by the probability of B, given that A already happened. Because A, because they're de dependent, A is going to affect B. So you have to keep in account that A happened. Okay. Um, so again, similarly, if I want to pick, like, if I have marbles, I'm going to pick a green marble and a blue marble. Well, if I pick that green marble, that means there's one less marble in the bag. So that affects the probability of picking a blue marble on the second choice. So that's kind of... Uh, uh, a very base example. Okay, so to do these, we're going to use what are called tree diagrams. So because you're honors, I want to show you what a tree diagram is. So when you use a tree diagram, what you're doing is you're showing a sample space for a chance process involving multiple stages, right? So a first event and a second event. So up here, we can see that the first event right here is about waking up, right? So you have an alarm clock. Do you hit the snooze or do you not hit the snooze? So when you go off these branches, notice that 0.6 and 0.1, if you add them together, you would get one. That should always occur. That So from whatever spot you're branching off, the probability should add to one. Okay. So uh, it says that the probability of each outcome is shown in the branch. Okay. So now the second event here, notice that there are two sets of arrows from each of these first boxes. So now these second events are conditional events, conditional probabilities. So this is being on time given that you hit the snooze. This is being late given that you hit the snooze. So notice at this point seven, notice right here, on time given that you hit the snooze. Again, notice that point seven and point three add to one. And then down here, point nine and point one add to one. So that should happen. So when you go off these chance processes with multiple with multiple uh, stages, uh, using a tree diagram is a great way to organize your data. Okay, so let's take a look here. It says, uh, does Meteor use relate to good grades? So the Kaiser Family Foundation recently released a study about the influence of media in the lives of young people aged 8 through 18. In the study, 70% of the youth were classified as light media users, 62% were classified as moderate media users, and 21% were classified as heavy media users. Of the light users who responded, 74% described their grades as good, which is A's or B's, while only 68% of the moderate users and 52% of the heavy users described their grades as good. Suppose we select one young person at random, complete the tree diagram to model this process, and then question B, which I'm going to add, give me one second. Okay, and then part B says find the probability uh, that uh, this person describes his or her grades as good. Okay, so uh, to complete the tree diagram, let's identify the first stage. So the first stage is all about the media use. Media use. And we have light media use. We have moderate media use. And we have heavy media use. So there are 0.17 who describe themselves as light, uh, 0.62, who describe themselves as moderate, and 0.21, who describes themselves as heavy. If you add these three numbers together, 0.17 and 0.62 is 0 0.79. 0 0.79 and 0 0.21 does equal one. So that's good. So that's all of our users, all of our uh, youth broken up. And now the second uh, event is your grades. And again, you either classify your grades as good and then we'll just say bad. You could also say not good. Good, bad. And again, notice I do it three times because there are three, uh, three branches in the first stage. So for light users, so of light users, this is a conditional probability, right? Of light users, 74% responded as good grades, so 0.74. 
So then how many would be bad? Well, that'd be 1 minus 0.74. That'd be 0.26. Again, these two must add up to 1. 68% of moderate users uh, said their grades were good. So 0.68. So again, 1 minus 0.68 is 0.32. And then 52% of heavy users said they're good. So that's uh, 52. That's bad. So 0.52 and 0.48. Okay, so now the question is, the question is, um, find the probability that they think their grades are good. So the probability of having good grades. Well, there's three branches that say good. Here, I'll use red. Here, here and here. So we have to follow the branch like this. So to get there, we have to go this way. That's one. This way, that's two. And this way, that's three. And to do this, we have to use the general multiplication rule, and we have to multiply these probabilities. So to find the probability of being good, you have to use the light and the good. 0.17 times 0.74. Add that to the probability of being moderate times the probability being good, given that you're moderate. Plus, the probability being heavy, times the probability of being, uh, having good grades, given that you're heavy, 0.52. This is how we're going to do this problem. Okay? So that's where, this where the general multiplication rule comes into play. For example, right here, that's the probability of being light, times the probability of having good grades, given that you're light. Right? So that's where that general multiplication rule comes into play that I just explained in the previous slide. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the graphing calculator. We're gonna round these to maybe two or, th or like three or four decimals. Probably three decimals, un unless it ends nicely. Okay, so I'll go to the graphing calculator. I took a picture of it. So we're doing 0.17 times 0.7 times 0.74 plus 0.62 times... Uh, 0.68 plus a 0.21 times 0.52. And there we go. And that would be the answer for having the good grades. So the probability of having good grades would equal 0 0.6566. And we'd write that down. Do not round because you don't need to. And that's the answer. Okay. So I'm going to stop the video now because that was kind of lengthy. I'm going to do one more example in the next video.